so much uh, for joining me today to, to talk about this. You know, we we originally connected about um, a project that uh, the council is doing next year around a subscription box and, and highlighting some of the products from some of our certified uh, minority businesses around the network and through introductions, um, I learned a bit of history um, about you and your background. And so as we look to um, celebrate Black History Month during the month of February, as well as recognize some uh, other significant events in Black and American history in 2021, um, I thought this was a wonderful opportunity to be able to speak with you. And so um, joining us today is Mr. Clifton Talbert. He is an author, an entrepreneur, a speaker, a community activist, um, and he's also one of the certified minority businesses as part of the National Minority Supplier Development Council Network. And so just really excited to have you here with us today. So welcome. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. So I want to start off, we could probably talk for hours just based upon your background and your history and all the things that you're involved in, but wanted to talk about two specific things with you today. One, um, as an author, um, I think you've authored probably what, more than 15 books maybe? Yeah, you're uh, in right. Total? Right, and, uh, but probably the one that you're most known for um, is a book that you authored in 1989, I believe it was, which is Once Upon a Time When We Were Colored. That's um, correct. And so when we were talking initially and you you pointed out the poster right there behind you, you know, I absolutely um, am, am, am familiar with that. I come from a family of of uh, of, of uh, uh, people who thought it was very important that I understand not only my family history, but black history in general. Um, and so when I looked at my required reading list as a child, <laughs> among them <laughs> were your book and, and that of a, a family friend, Dr. John Hope Franklin, which I know you had a relationship with Dr. Franklin as, as well. And so it's, it's really a pleasure to be able to talk to you about the book. But one of the things that I had a question about um, the book is what, what prompted you to want to write and share your story? You know, that's... Uh... It's a great question because it allows me to tell part of the story that I don't really talk about that frequently. I was around 19 years of age during the last years of the Vietnam War. And I literally lived with the dreaded fear that I would get my assignment to Saigon. So in the midst of that fear, the only thing that I could do to give me some emotional relief was to write. Mm -hmm. And I would write, not with the idea that an author lived inside of me, I simply wrote about the people in that small town. I mean, I would sit in my barracks room on the floor with my back up against the wall with my yellow pad and pencil. And I would just write about those everyday ordinary people who meant the world to me. And, and that's what I started doing with no idea that I had not only captured my story, but I had captured black life, everyday black life prior to integration. Wow, wow. So so it really was therapy for you. It was therapy. Way. I yeah. mean, I was I it was almost like I was quarantined mm -hmm. from the reality of Vietnam by trying to write about my hometown and the people who live there because that world was the world of my best days for mm -hmm. the most part. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as it related to the family and friends that surrounded our lives. Right. So when you think about some of the things that you share in the book and like, uh, I guess, lessons that you learn from your, your parents and your grandparents. Um, you know, one of the things that I find interesting today is that a lot of times when I share my family history, other people don't seem to really fully understand their own history. And so talk to me a little bit about how growing up, those experiences that not only that you had, but those that were had by your ancestors kind of helped to shape you and, and how those stories um, really kind of, you know, uh, helped you understand the struggles of your ancestors, but then also the world you were living in then and even today. You know, there are two words that come to mind, collective unselfishness. Mm. I will be forever amazed and how those people were so little, but yet when it came to expectations, when it came to dreaming, when it came to hope, 
they always believe in tomorrow. I can remember we, my family, for the most part, were domestic cotton field workers. We went from field to field picking cotton. My great aunt who raised me up until the in her 80s was still doing that, going to the fields picking cotton. But what people don't realize, oftentimes in the fields with their back bent low, with a nine foot sack behind their backs, my aunt was raising money to send to her son in college. Mm -hmm. I mean, they never ever thought in terms of, my child won't make it, my child will make it. And uh, for them, many of their dreams would not be able to come true. But they had dreams and they transferred their dream to the dreams of the generation before them. And I was part of that generation. You are going to get an education. My, I had to travel 100 miles round trip to school every day for four years. I never missed a day out of school. I graduated valedictorian of my class. I'm a member of Phi Beta Kappa today because my great aunt got up every morning before I did, stood on the front porch in a flannel gown and a head scarf and pulled the string on a 60 watt light bulb to let Mr. Murray Washington know that I was going to school that day. She never missed, I never missed, Mr. Murray never missed. I, I mean, that to me, that collective unselfishness was the, is the great lesson from what I call during those transition years uh, when life had not gotten to 1964. Uh, the civil rights legislation, those things had not passed. Uh, they lived in an entirely different world. But in that world, they had vision for the future that included their children. And they were willing to do whatever they could in order to push that vision into reality.